You can get, hey, you can, you can get, um, you can try to take some video, you can just give it to him, like, get yeah, your phone. Yeah, sort it out. Yeah. On my camera? On my phone? You always be busting on my phone. That's what I'm saying. Nah, you use my phone. Yeah. Do you even got a camera on your phone? <laughs> What's the name of the next place? Uh, I know you, you sent it to me. Right? Yeah. I got you on the email. No, let me see. Yeah, I it. Are you taking video too? Mm-hmm. We're, we're periscoping. Just so that uh, folks who are on our social media will have a good time. So I, you know, I'll move that around here and there as we get going. Nice to you. Only ten dollars. I networks. get um. There's a, a, a email list called Smart, Smart Traveler or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. saying like little teeny things <clears throat> that uh, make good sense for people to have when mm -hmm. they're out and about. And so that little tripod was one. That's what's up. <clears throat> Everybody's phone on silent. Yeah. You don't hear any little Wayne blasting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Troy, you got my message about the Harris component. Yep. Okay. Good Wednesday morning to you, Word Family. This is Stephanie Renee welcoming you to today's Get Over the Hump Day edition of The Mojo. And we have another star-studded, jam-packed edition of today's program. I've got, I joked as we were just going on the air that I've got a lot of testosterone around me here in the studio today, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. We are joined by a filmmaker and cast of The North Star, a wonderful film that talks about Philadelphia history, that talks about black history, that's going to have its red carpet premiere here in Philadelphia tomorrow night at the Kimmel Center for the Performing Arts. And so rather than try and summarize all of this, we're also periscoping those of you who are following me on Twitter. So we encourage you to check out the video as it is being broadcast live while we're having our conversation here on the air. But if you gentlemen would, uh, please uh, lean up to the microphone and explain to everyone in our listening audience your name and your role in the making of this wonderful feature film. Uh, I'm Jeremiah Trotter. Um, I was one of the stars in, in the, uh, the movie The North Star, played Big Ben, mm -hmm. Big Ben Jones. Uh, Thomas K. Phillips, I'm the writer and director of The North Star. Thomas Bartley Jr. and I'm the co-star of the film and I play Moses Hopkins. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, this is a this is a big deal and, and Mr. Trotter, if I might. <clears throat> Uh, we know that you are the star of this film, but many people in our listening audience are most familiar with you for the role that you have played in making the Eagles a world-class football team. Uh, and this is so. This is a transition for you. This is a, uh, an opportunity for your fans to get a chance to see you in a completely different capacity. So, what was this like for you being on the big screen? Well, it was definitely a transition. Uh, I've never been in front of the camera in that aspect, so. Um... It was fun, had a great time. It was very, um, it brought out the competitive nature in me. You know, when you retire from football, you look for things that gonna, that you can compete in without beating your body up. Right. So golf was is, is one. <laughs> and then yeah. this, this, this role came along and it really challenged me, you know, each and every day just to, to bring out the character that, you know, that, that Thomas Phillips wanted me to bring out in this character. Yes, indeed. And so, Thomas, you and I got a chance to talk on Friday yeah. and talked a little bit about the background of creating this film and this being your first feature. So this is a big deal. But it's also local history that we absolutely need to know. And you have you know, enlisted some wonderful star power to help you bring this story to life. So talk a little bit, for, especially for the people who weren't tuned in on Friday, give us a little bit of background on how you came to know this story and why you felt it was important to bring it to the big screen. Well, uh my mother actually took me to the church. The church is still in existence. Uh, it's open four times a year. It's called Mount Gilead. It's on Buckingham Mountain. And I went to the service, and uh, you know there was a big plaque talking about Big Ben. So I never heard anything about it. So I went to the historical library the next day and read all this information about the history of my town, my county, and my state. 
and I never knew, knew, knew anything about that during school. So that was my main reason why I wrote the script. I wanted the children to know um, their history, where they came from, especially in my area, um, in the Philadelphia area, and how amazing we are and resilient we are to become so far in such a short amount of time. And that's maybe the, the main reason why I put it down the pen and paper, you know? Yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, you know, we know that when we talk about escaping from slavery, the whole concept of freedom, nobody did it by themselves, that there was always a network, there were always people right. involved in uh, uplifting and keeping people focused on the strength that it took in order to make these systems happen for people to escape to freedom. So talk a little bit about your character and how he interacts with Big Ben. Okay, so my character again is Moses Hopkins, and um, I interact mostly with Big Ben throughout the entire film. The uh, project is about two slaves that escape um, from a northern plantation because Big Ben is going to be sold. So Big Ben is like my my best friend, my big brother throughout the whole movie. So. He, he was getting carried around the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was still on the football field. I'm like, man, this is wor this, this worse than training camp. <laughs> I played my part in helping Big Ben out. Too. He was always yeah. hurt, man. Every day he hurt. <laughs> one day his leg, next day he got a headache. <laughs> I'm going to let him get this scene, but we had one scene <laughs> where we was hiding in the bushes. Uh -huh. So the director, Thomas Phillips, said, all right, Thomas, you go to sleep. I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> I've been carrying this joke up every hill I can think of. Why can't I sleep and he be the lookout guy? Right, right. I don't want that. Oh, man. <laughs> Behind the okay, scenes. So it was a little easy for me. <laughs> no, but that's wonderful. This, this idea of not only uh, building the camaraderie, the, the whole idea of the storytelling, and getting a chance to see black men in key positions in the entire creation of this film is also really important. Thomas, when you think about um, how you want to use this film as it continues to gain momentum, I know that beyond its role in theaters, mm -hmm. that you've expressed a really strong desire for it to be used in terms of curriculum Absolutely. in schools, because this is history that you yourself didn't know. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. You know, I, everyone says it's African American history, but in my opinion, it's American history, and I think everyone should be aware to it. Um, and it's important for all people. I mean, not just African Americans, but, you know, our Caucasian brethren and, you know, everyone. Um, it's a story about struggle and unity and people coming together for a certain cause. And it's relevant today, if you know what's going on today about immigration and whatnot. Um, it's all relevant. So, yeah, it's it's incredibly important, and I know a lot of people in our listening audience uh, love this idea of everything that you all represent because it's important to bring this history to life. It's also really, really important for us to talk about the network of what it takes to bring a film like this to bear. So, you know, it, Jeremiah, try to want to come back to you uh, and talk a little bit about you mentioned this idea of the transition in your life in terms of career and in in sharing a story like this on the big screen. What did you learn, not just about history, but about yourself as a part of this process? Well, I learned, first I'm gonna tell you what I learned about history. And sometimes you think you know, you know, what happened, like the process of, of slavery and how they became free. But I learned so much from shooting this film on how you talked about earlier, uh, different organizations, no slave got free by themselves. There were different organizations, different uh, areas where they would safe houses, where they would go and uh, the, uh, the knitting of the quilt, you know, how they would put signs, different signs of, uh, in, in the quilts yes. to, let, to let the slaves know uh, or other um, uh, the, the parishioners that, that, would, that would help help them, you know, get free. Yeah. yeah. Parishioners that would help them get free, you know, and they would read the signs on the quilts to let them know if it was safe or you know to stay put right man it was it was amazing and and just some of the scenes that you know Thomas and I encounter in the woods you know mm -hmm. uh you know was really you know pretty horrific and then just to bring myself I remember Thomas and I we hung out a lot before the movie because we wanted that chemistry right. to come through and man and so I invited him to my house and we was hanging out you know Almost like every every other day, right? <laughs> and um, the chemistry once we hit the you know the, the the screen, the chemistry really really came through. And um, yeah. you know he is like my little brother. You know and we spent a lot of time together doing the shoot, and uh, really great guy, great actor. 
And, um, <clears throat> you know, we had, we had a great time shooting the movie. You know, where I learned about myself, um, you know, I don't think I'll be making a living uh, shooting movies, <laughs> being an actor, you know. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't feel like you had sort of a natural a natural rhythm to this acting thing? Well, or was it this I, I, role? I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I was fortunate that Big Ben was somewhat of my character. Mm -hmm. You know, he was somewhat a spiritual guy, big brother type of type of guy. And, you know, I've, I've always played the big brother role. So I could kind of be myself in a lot of the scenes. Yeah. You know, um, even the emotional scenes that we shot, that was that was like one of the toughest scenes I ever had to do because, you know, it was real emotions. Yeah. I remember Clifton Powell telling me, he said, try, that's why most of us actors are crazy because <laughs> most of the... the, the the tears and the emotion you see on TV, they're real emotions. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it took me about 10 minutes to get myself together after that, after one of those shoots. Yeah, So I would imagine. So, with that, well, and th let's go back to you, Thomas, with, with that kind of conversation. You all are partnered with some real veteran actors. There's a lot uh, of uh, interacting that our audience can expect to see on the screen from familiar faces and getting to know a lot of you in terms of your up and coming roles. Talk about that process. Well, I, I think that uh, working with the veteran actors is um, it's, it, it's a privilege all in itself because you can learn a lot. I learned a lot from Cliff throughout the shoot. I learned a lot from Cliff throughout the shoot. I, I actually sat down and had a great conversation. I remember one um, in between shots, me, Trot, and Lynn Whitfield sat down and had a great conversation. And I learned a lot just in that small period of time with her. So um, working with a lot of veteran actors is, is just a gift all, all in itself. So... Um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. So, do you have you have designs on continuing to expand your feature film career? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, He's a professional actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have some things that are out now. I even have um, my last project that was on BT Frat Brothers. It's currently <coughs> still running on Netflix, and um, I'm working on some other things. I'm steady auditioning for some uh, even bigger projects that I've auditioned for. Can't really say what they were, but right. um, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to make a career out of this. Excellent. We're yeah. definitely glad to hear that. And Thomas Phillips, you know, as I said, we got double Thomas in the studio, so just so people aren't being... We call him Little Thomas and Big Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real, that's what we call him on set. That, that'll work. I was going to say, I, I, I'm not necessarily going to go that route, but, but I get it. Um, in terms of the, the success that you had with being able to pair up-and-coming stars, brand new to the, to the big screen stars like Jeremiah Trotter, with some of these veteran actors... Uh, I know a lot of people in our listening audience will be attracted for any number of reasons mm -hmm. to be able to see that kind of interaction and that chemistry. And uh, you mentioned on Friday that this was, you know, kind of a benevolent star looking down. The, the film's called The North Star, yeah. and maybe that that's that kind of energy that allowed you to bring all of this talent together on one project, your first feature project. Yeah, I mean, it truly was a blessing. Like Thomas said, um, a lot of things came together perfectly um, within the stars, I guess you can say. Um, but first, these two set the tone for everyone um, on the set. Um, you know, they're the lead characters, the lead actors, and they came to set professional every day, knew their lines, and were very easy to teach or coach. Mm -hmm. And their passion was just off the charts, and their timing was off the charts, and it really set the tone for everyone else. You know, the stars will come in one day or two days, and they're gone. But everyone was watching these guys to see how the tone was set, and they really set it. And you know, we had a lot of issues going on with the sets, like any other film, but the foundation was strong. So, and they kept going, and you know, the reason why I think it is what it is, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have the pleasure of having you all here in studio today. The big night is tomorrow night at the Kimmel Center for Performing Arts, where you all are going to have your red carpet premiere of the film. So, especially for you, Mr. Trotter, uh, with this being your first film, your first official walk down the red carpet uh, to accept this these accolades for you taking this star turn, what are you anticipating for tomorrow night's event? I'm looking forward to a great night. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about going down the red carpet and seeing you know, a lot of the cast members that you, that you work with every day uh, during the shoot. And, um, you know, just see people's reaction. You know, we uh, a couple years ago, we did a, a, a small um, screening screening up in, in, uh, in where was that? Doorstown, PA. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, was, it was a great turnout. 
So I'm, I'm excited. And a lot of people been asking me about, you know, when when can we go see it? When can we go see it? So yeah. this is the opportunity to go see it tomorrow night. I think the red carpet event starts at 7. Uh-huh. Uh, you can go on to uh, KimmelCinema.org to purchase your tickets. It's almost sold out. So, um, and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to a great night, star-studded night. Yes, indeed. Now, I, I was like, do you also anticipate that there'll be some people showing up with some Eagles gear to let you know that they are absolutely <laughs> there to support you in, in this moment? Yeah, I can anticipate some <laughs> Eagles fans. You know, we got the greatest fans in the National Football League. So, and, um, you know, I have a great relationship with the fans. You know, five years in retirement, and, uh, you know, they still love me just just as if I retired, you know, yesterday. So, yeah. uh and I have a very uh, great connection with the Eagles fans. Absolutely. And so Thomas's same thing for you mm-hmm. with this, you know, this idea of being able to bring more and more. We're so excited that the film industry has really embraced Philadelphia and greater Philadelphia and more and more feature projects are being made here. This one's extra special because it has a tie to this community, you know, the, the greater Philadelphia community. But what are your thoughts or maybe desires for what tomorrow's Red Carpet premiere is going to be like? Well, I think the community all came together in making this film. We've got a lot of stuff, um, the horses, the costumes, we've got a lot of stuff for free. And that's why the budget was so low. We made this great film in 24 days because the community came together. You know, and it's still coming together. I just premiered, we've got like, people like the, uh, the Harris Club. Uh-huh. Um, uh, they're very good sponsors for us and helping us promote this film, promote today. Uh-huh. We've to thank them a lot. And uh, we're just looking for a great night to come out and enjoy some star-studded cast. A great film and some great local talent. Yes, indeed. And Thomas, you mentioned that you know th- this is where you're trying to spend the rest of your life, basically, Absolutely. in at on on the big screen at events like this. So, uh, so where does this go in terms of your sort of trajectory? Um, well, I, I have the highest probably uh, expectation of this film. I hope that tomorrow is just the start of uh, a trickle down effect of just many, many, many more things to come. Um, spreading the movie you know, outside of Philadelphia, going into some other states and uh, potentially into a whole lot of theaters. So I have the highest expectation. I just think if the word spreads, then um, I think it'll do really well. It's <laughs> indeed, yes. And one, and one more thing, uh, next Thursday, which is September 24th, it's going to be screened at the African American History Museum of Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, during a Pope's visit. So um, we're very pleased and honored to be incorporated with that so that's wonderful well I tell you what if you want to spread the word then coming to word in order to be able to share that with our audience is precisely the way to do it and we know that you all have been in traffic and back and forth all day long so we truly appreciate the hustle that it took to get down here to be able to be on the air with us and speak to our audience this morning so we wish you all an amazing red carpet premiere tomorrow night we intend to be in the house and we know we also have some tickets to give away to listeners who would like to be there and help celebrate this amazing moment with you. So now, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we turn to you. We've got five pairs of tickets that we are making available to those of you who are tuned in right now, courtesy of Harris Philadelphia. If you want to attend a red carpet premiere right here in your city at one of our amazing arts venues, the Kimball Center of Performing Arts at Broad and Spruce Streets, then you need to get on the phone now. 215-634-8065. Toll free at 1-866-361-09. And we will hook you up with a pair of those tickets. Come dress to impress and with your phones or uh, cameras fully charged up. It's going to be a star studded night that you do not want to miss and celebrate the premiere of the North Star. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to continue our star studded jam packed edition of the Mojo. Stay tuned. Feel the 